Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 7th of September with me, Patrick Mundley. Uh, the dollar index appears to have found support near the 92 level and that may be enough for the time being. Dollar index losses should be held in check ahead of Thursday's ECB meeting where it will have the first opportunity to respond to the Fed's change in monetary policy strategy. Assuming the ECB doesn't surprise with some concrete signals of imminent easing, then I suspect that dollar rallies will be curtailed and likely see further pressure off the ECB. Uh, US obviously out today for Labor Day holiday, but the focus for the rest of the week will be the NFIB small business optimism on Tuesday, and then the CPI figures on Friday. In theory, CPI figures should move the market far less than before, now that the Fed is prepared to run the economy hot. But any upside surprises may be more felt through the long end of the Treasury curve, uh, perhaps helping the dollar index the most. From a technical perspective, the dollar index is holding the uh, 9192 area support as the 9340 acts as resistance. We can see a pullback into the 92 again before ultimately getting move up to test the 9450 descending channel resistance. From there, I'd be looking for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions targeting the psychological 90 handle. Any move through uh, 9160 this week will open a test of the descending trend line support again down to the 97 area. Um, in the Eurozone, the standout of the week will be the Thursday's ECB meeting. No doubt the strong euro will be a hot topic as this will be the issue of the Fed's change in monetary policy strategy. On the former, we've started to see some soft verbal intervention against euro strength, and the focus at the meeting will be on two things. One, how much lower does the ECB revise its 2022 inflation forecast, currently at 1.3%, and secondly, will it start dropping hints about future easing? Given the broad momentum behind dollar weakness, I think the ECB can only slow, not reverse, the euro-dollar appreciation. Therefore, look for some consolidation ahead of Thursday's ECB meeting, but expect traders to be looking to buy dips. Local data for the week ahead will be a look at July industrial production figures <coughs> across Europe and the Centex Investor Confidence Survey expected to show further improvements. From a technical perspective, like I say, anticipate further consolidation in the euro, looking ideally for a test of the ascending trendline support here down to the 1750 handle. From there, I'd be looking for bullish reversal patterns to set long positions, targeting a move up to test the 122, which is a pattern that I discussed in the last week's live market analysis session. And you can catch up the video of that through my blog page on the Tickmill blog. In the UK, overnight, we've had <clears throat> reports from the FT that uh, the UK government are looking to make amendments to legislation which would put the current uh, round of talks in significant jeopardy. Uh, the main divisive points remain state aid. And I don't expect the UK to present any acceptable proposals for the EU this week. The October deadline for trade negotiations looks likely to be breached with no imminent breakthrough in negotiations. The negative headlines overnight are only likely to increase, coupled with the near-term limited upside for uh, the euro dollar. The recent GBP rise should stall, uh, with the pair unlikely to breach 135 level anytime soon. From a technical perspective, like I say, 135 remains the major hurdle. I'm looking for a move now down into the 130.30 area. Look, any pops higher from there to the 132.62 to test that from below would, uh, would offer an opportunity to get in on the short side, ultimately looking for a test of the 129 ascending trendline support before bulls will look to mount another challenge on the pivotal 135.136 area. Developments in Japanese politics suggest that PM Abe will be replaced by close ally and um, cabinet secretary Suga. This should deliver continuity in Arbonomics, i.e. the loose fiscal and monetary mix that has dominated Japan since 2012. This has done little to trigger a sustainable rise in inflation, yet this has kept the, the yen relatively soft. The election for the new LDP leader takes place on 14th of September. In terms of data, the week ahead sees the final uh, second quarter 2020 GDP, the July BOP figures and core machinery orders. 
with challenges to the V-shaped narrative expected to emerge over current months. Uh, I expect the yen to start outperforming on the crosses and suggest that the dollar yen will struggle to sustain gains over 108. From a technical perspective, we still have that equality objective at the 108. We also have symmetry swing resistance coming in there. And so I'm looking for any move into that area to watch for a bearish reversal pattern to set short positions, ultimately looking for a test of the 104.16 again. Uh, any failure this week below 105.85 could mean that we see that 104.16 ahead of any test of the 108. Finally, in Australia, the September RBA meeting proved to be a non-event with the central bank not expressing any urgent discomfort with the ongoing currency appreciation. The week ahead will be rather calm on the domestic data front, with the Aussie likely looking through both business and consumer confidence readings on Tuesday and Wednesday, respectively. Despite the COVID-related lockdown in Victoria, Aussie price action remains primarily determined by the global risk sentiment. The currency was one of the main underperformers last week as risk appetite soured. Uh, from a technical perspective, Whilst the Aussie continues to find support at this 72 level, I'm still looking for a ping of the 75 before we see a more meaningful correction. Also, we're looking for a pullback to test the 71 handle. Uh, any breach of the 72 level this week on a closing basis would suggest that we've seen a local high in terms of the Aussie. And I'd be looking for a pullback then to test this 70 area as potential support. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 7th of September. As always, join me on Thursday for a live analysis session at 1 p.m. UK time. Thanks very much and have a good week.